Butler, a part of a sign and trade with the Heat, sending the Sixers All Star to Miami in exchange for Josh Richardson. I'm not sure Ben Simmons playing basketball coming from Australia right. with the way he's been coddled by this franchise right. and himself right. is built that way. The Brooklyn Nets are trading James Harden to Philadelphia. They've fallen short and they're loaded with talent throughout the roster. This is disappointing. Just want to win a championship. Uh, you know, whatever it takes. I don't know what that's going to be, whether it's in Philly or you know, anywhere else. We are now 76 days away from the start of the NBA regular season, so why not, you know, process where the 76ers are at. Philadelphia uh -huh. has had an interesting <laughs> wah, wah off season so far. It wasn't necessarily today because they added a ton of players, right? But of course, James Harden, he opted into his deal. And then I was driving when we all got the reporting from Adrian Wojnarowski that said he requested a trade Swerve. after he opted in. Exactly. Swerve. I tried to stay in my lane, though. They brought in Patrick Beverly, of course, Mo Bamba. They lost some depth a little bit here, and we're about to enter the nickname nurse era in Philadelphia after the departure of Doc Rivers. So Ramona Shelburne is joining us here on NBA Today. And I feel like the Sixers are really at a pivotal point for their franchise, right? Joel Embiid, the reigning MVP, he is in the prime of his career. So Ramona, what are you hearing now in the beginning of August about where the Sixers organization stands with all things James Harden? Well, I think if you ask the players, they are hopeful that James Harden plays with them this year. That's that's option one. It's the same thing for the, the front office. But the front office is in a bit of a stalemate with James Harden. I mean, there's mm. there's nothing happening right now in terms of trade discussions. Mostly it's it's the dead period for the NBA, but yep. also there's just no offers that really move the scene forward. And so the, the, the best we can report right now is that Tyrese Maxey has been out in Los Angeles working out with his trainer, Chris Johnson, and working out with Joel Embiid's trainer, Drew Hanlon. Now, mm. Joel Embiid's been on his honeymoon. He's coming back to Los Angeles to work out. But Tyrese Maxey is expected to have a major role for the Sixers. He has an even bigger role for the Sixers if James Harden does not play for them this year. But it's go time for Tyrese Maxey. And Joel Embiid, you know, when he's very excited about the team with James Harden, but he's also very excited about the ceiling for Tyrese Maxey because you've seen him grow. They obviously are not extending him this summer, but he will. He is a big part of their future, and they will extend him when the time comes. But partnership this summer, when they're both out here working out, pretty soon together with yeah. the same trainer is going to be something to watch. Yeah, there's a couple of, of 76ers players out here in Los Angeles getting their workouts done right now. Yeah. But the questions start to to pile up when we get to not just the regular season, it's been the postseason for the 76ers where they've had disappointing yeah. exit after disappointing exit here. So, Perk, is this the make or break season for Joel Embiid, James Harden, this iteration of the 76ers in your estimation? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, it is. I mean, and, <laughs> yeah. and look, it's almost to the point where, you know, you had the Real Housewives of Atlanta and the Real Housewives of Potomac. It's almost like this is the real men of Philadelphia 76ers <laughs> because okay. every single year, this is this is a real reality show. It's nothing but nonstop drama right. and less about basketball when it comes to the Philadelphia 76ers. And if I'm Joel Embiid, at what point do I grow tired? Well, this year, after this year, he should be tired. And I believe that this is a make-or-break season. You have Tyrese Maxey, who we who we are, we are expecting big things out of. Joel Embiid, he's under a new coach, under Nick Nurse, who's also a championship coach. Uh, Tobias Harris seemed like he's going to be back. Don't know what's going to happen with James Harden. Hopefully they can convince him. But all of a sudden, you bring an emotional leader in the locker room. Smart move by Daryl Moore bringing in Patrick Beverly. Not only because I was just on Pat Bell podcast, I'm showing them love right Plug. now, but I really mean this. <laughs> but yeah, but at the end at the end of the day, it comes out that if this season is not a success, and I mean making it to the conference finals at the very minimum, mm. if I'm Joel Embiid, I'll make this my last run with the Philadelphia 76ers. And no one should be mad at them. So to answer and re reiterate what Perk is saying, yes. 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 
It absolutely is a make or break <laughs> season. Just because, I mean, there are things that were holding the threads of trust the process together, right? Having this, uh, what is it, wash, rinse, repeat cycle of stars to pair with them. Yeah. So much so that we all became believers, like, okay, maybe this can actually work with James Harden and Joel Embiid. And when you get to this point, yeah. you can't ask for any more patience. You want to see um, the actual results. And for Joel Embiid, he's giving you results. He's gotten healthier every season. Now, yeah, his goal is to play a full, complete season without having to manage things, but he's gotten healthier. He won MVP. So what else does he want at the age of 29? I believe that's his where, uh, whereabouts his age is. He's going to start looking around the league and see guys that are making, you know, choices that are predicated on, can I have this legacy of winning a championship? And is that going to be here? Am I going to have to go through another process? Or is any place else in Perk's word eye candy? You don't want that idea for Joel Embiid. You want to make the most of what things right. are. Even though Tyrese Maxey, 20 points per game, 20 years old. Like, that's great, but you need to entice him with so much more. So he will have to be patient through the season to see mm -hmm. where James Harden really manages out to be. But still, it, it seems like if things don't go well and what is well, maybe a finals run, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to see him continue to want to be there. Well, I'll tell you this. He wants to come back in the best shape of his life. And so, mm. you know, when you talk about players losing weight and all that, that is a goal that he has set. I don't, you know, until we see it, let's 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 push pause on that. But I think his mentality is he's going to give everything that he has to the Sixers this year. And that includes putting his arm around James Harden. That includes trying to lift Tyrese Maxey up. That includes inviting all those guys to his wedding. You saw Tobias Harris there, right? right? You saw... So George Niang, former Sixer. And, and I think this year really is a make or break year in the, in the sense that th they have all this cap space going forward. And that, you know, he's in very close communication with Daryl Morey in the front office, even Josh, owner Josh Harris, talking about their plans and strategy for the future. And so their plan is we've got cap space after next year. Well, you better do something with that cap space. Does that mean free agents? Does that mean trades? Joel Embiid is very involved all of those discussions going forward with the 76ers. And I think when we talk about this year, it doesn't necessarily mean at the end of this year he asks out. Right. It means this year is very important because they got to get a squad together for the long haul if they want to keep Joel Embiid happy and in the fold. Mm -hmm. And he's very involved in all of those conversations with that front office. So finish the sentence for me, Perk. The 76ers is presently constructed. They, their ceiling is blank. The Eastern Conference Finals. And is that good enough for Joel Embiid if you were Joel? Well, it's a, it's a step further than where he's been in the past, so absolutely. Okay. Janae? I concur. <laughs> no notes. <laughs> I'm okay with this. Thank you so I'll much, say this. I'll say this. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'll say this. It's not just about where they finish this year. It's about what it looks like going forward. Right. right? So we, you hear a lot of teams talk about cap space, okay? What does it look like and what you do with that cap space going forward? I think that's the most important thing. Where the New York Knicks and Josh Hart, they're finalizing a four-year, $81 million contract extension. That is what our Woj reported. So, Perk, do you like this deal for both sides? I love it. And to all the young fellas out there, Josh Hart, 10.7 rebounds this postseason for the Knicks. Be a star in your role and you will get paid. Great great uh, signing on both sides for the Knicks and Josh Hart. The Knicks are going to be a problem. The Knicks be a star be a in your role. It's a, it's a great thing for all of us to, to keep in mind every day. I try to do it. I know Chanae is a star in all roles she does. And uh, speaking of stars, George Adano <laughs> joining us in studio. I, I do want to keep it in New York here because for yeah. the first time in what felt like forever, the Knicks, they were able to get to the second round and have a playoff appearance there. Uh, Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, they're going to be paired together for the foreseeable future. Of course, we got some Nova love adding Dante DiVincenzo. I know, though, Knicks fans, we love you. You're not necessarily um, <laughs> patient, right? That so do you think fair. that they're taking steps <laughs> in the right direction here, George, the Knicks? Absolutely. I think they've been doing this now for a couple of seasons. And previous iterations of this mm -hmm. front office have tried to fast track things. And that's not how you can build a sustainable winner, in my opinion. Yes, there's outliers in those situations. But if you're the Knicks, you've got something good. You've taken steps now to be a formidable team in the Eastern Conference. To me, they're one player or one big move away from being a real contender in the Eastern Conference. Oh, I absolutely agree. And now hopefully they can put it all together.
I was gonna say, and save you more. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> because the Knicks, like, if you're a star looking to play somewhere and you look at their roster, you're like, oh, I can do that. Before the sell used to be, oh, hey, you know, you wanna play in New York, you wanna get that, I don't wanna say clout, but that notoriety by being a star player in, in New York City at Madison Square Garden. Now it's like, the basketball is what's bringing you there. So it's the best of both worlds. So I like exactly what they've done. And listening to our insiders having a little bit of an ear to the ground in the league, stars around the, the, the NBA are taking notice. They are seeing what is building in New York. And when you look at the moves that they're making and the space that they're going to have in the next couple of years coming up here, they are poised to be able to add that big name and actually have the infrastructure to be able to back it up here. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.